So when I was first diagnosed, um, people didn't really take celiac disease very seriously. I was lucky to already know a few people who had it, so um, that was helpful. But, um, you know, I had my boss tell me it was all in my head. And I still get the odd person who jokingly says, oh, that's a made up disease, but I just don't take any notice of it anymore. Um, I did have to go through a long stage when I was first diagnosed of explaining over and over again to people what celiac disease did, you know, how serious it was. And, and uh, But after I'd gotten through that stage, it was, you know, it was quite easy and, and everyone just respects it now. I've been involved with Wesley Research Institute a couple of times. The first was when my daughter was being investigated for celiac disease. Um, we took part in the point of care test, so that was great. And then I was excited to take part again in the gluten threshold study when I became aware of it. Um, and I really encourage anyone who has celiac disease to get involved because um, any way that we can um, further the area of research in celiac disease is going to be beneficial for all of us. Generally what happens is someone, a patient, goes through their life and they have general discomfort, they have a bit of bloating, they may have diarrhea, they may have problems with weight gain. They don't realize that it's connected to their celiac disease until they hit 40 or 50 and then they go, I'm going to go get this checked and they turn out it's positive for celiac disease. But one thing that a lot of individuals don't realize is they may have had dermatitis as a kid, they may have had fertility issues if they were trying to get pregnant in their 20s, especially like for women. Um, and they may have had low bone density. They may have had fractures when they were younger. They may have had dental defects. All of these manifestations have been associated with celiac disease and celiac disease patients have a higher risk to develop these. So the earlier we find that, the easier it is to manage these other comorbidities and external intestinal manifestations. So we shouldn't just think of celiac disease as one homogenous uh, intestinal disease. There's a whole range of symptoms that's associated with them that really should be managed early on. We're fairly confident that autoimmune diseases as a whole are on the rise. So as traditional diseases or traditional infectious diseases like tuberculosis um, that we tend not to see too much anymore fall, so as we get access to better healthcare, better medicines, better vaccinations, those diseases seem to be going down but autoimmune diseases seem to be on the rise and there's quite a bit of data that um, confirms that. So I think research into celiac disease or research into anything is not always easy. It's actually, there's a lot of work that goes behind it from a lot of people. Um, having people contribute to having this research done is really important. Um, and Wesley Research Institute has certainly got behind celiac research in Queensland. Um, we'd love you to be able to continue to support them uh, to do what they've been doing. We're really grateful um, for everyone who supports research in the celiac disease and we're really grateful of the support that Wesley Research Institute has given us in the celiac disease.